there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and it's time for the Sketchbook Sunday video of the week. I am working on this lotion bottle that I picked up at the Christmas tree shop a couple weeks ago. I had purchased a couple bottles of um, lotion, but the bottles that came in didn't have like a dispenser, and um, it was just kind of messy to use otherwise, and so I actually went to a couple stores until I found this one that really sparked joy. Um, and it's just really pretty, and I thought, you know, I think I would like to paint that, you know, and part of my brain says, Lindsay, really a lotion bottle. Nobody's going to care about that. But it's like, you know what? I'm interested in that. And that's going to be a perfect thing for my sketchbook. I'm going to be using gouache paint today. And these are the Arteza gouache paints that I um, got recently that I put in the little boxes from Harbor Freight. That solution is working out really well. I was a little concerned that I might get some mold in the boxes um, because some people said that that happened to them with gouache paint before. But luckily, there was no issue. I did see some condensation. So I just popped those um, boxes open and I'm just letting them dry out a little bit more and I will let these dry out completely before I close the tops. They're not in airtight containers though so that does make it a little bit better. I started off with a rough sketch in my uh, sketchbook and I'll link all these supplies below and if you feel like you need a little more help drawing I do have a brand new learn to draw with Lindsay course available and I will link that up as well and a 50% off coupon code if you um, are interested in taking it. So now that I've got the basic shapes down I can start playing with my paint and uh, if you want to do this in acrylic um, you totally can. I just prefer gouache myself um, but this would be fine in acrylic. We're not lifting up any of the under layers um, in this picture so there's no reason you can't use um, casein or acrylic or um, even oils for this but uh, your oils obviously take longer to dry so you work on whatever you want now the reason I chose gouache instead of watercolors is because I was having the feeling that I'd probably want to use some gouache white for some of the hazy highlights so I thought well why don't I just use gouache because I can thin it down like watercolor and build up layers like watercolor and then I have the opaque highlights um, if I want it so that's why I chose that for this particular project people always ask why'd you pick that medium over this medium so I figured I probably ought to tell you Gouache is a really forgiving medium, meaning that if you make a mistake, you can lift it off with a damp brush, you can layer over it, you can keep uh, tweaking it until you get it just right. I think that's why it's such a popular medium with um, graphic designers, because if a client says, gee, I don't like that, you gotta change it, it's easy to do. It's it's much easier than with watercolor. Um, so give it a try. If you like watercolor, but you kind of um, wish you had a little more opacity, give it a shot. Like for me, any tutorial I do in gouache can be done in acrylics and I know that acrylics are more popular than gouache but I don't feel the um, I just don't feel the joy when I paint with acrylics I'm not calling it a bad medium I think it's wonderful like my friend cinnamon does beautiful work with acrylics it's just not my cup of tea um, so if you feel that way, try gouache, you know, because you might like the look of acrylic sometimes or the look of oils, but you don't want to deal with a mess or the hassle. Um, give this a try. I'm using a stronger blue to add shadows and to put the pattern onto my glass here. It's a, a very easy uh, technique. It's just some layering and you could do this in watercolors as well if you don't have gouache. Um, and then maybe just add a little Chinese white to the end when we get some of those lighter techniques or even white acrylic paint. You use what you got. It, white, white colored pencil even, you know, you do you. So to make my darkest shadow, um, I'm using the Prussian blue, a little bit of rose and some burnt umber. Because the Prussian blue and burnt umber looked a little green to me, the rose counteracts that green because red and green are opposite. Um, you could use black. I know a lot of gouache designers do. Uh, that's totally fine, but I love the challenge of mixing my darks, and I was just reading The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin, wonderful book, and um, she made this comment, and I'm, I have to paraphrase it because I won't get it exactly the way she said it, but uh, she said there's like a wonderful thing that happens when challenge and skill meet. So, and that's what I feel like happens in these sketchbook Sunday projects. I'm not trying to teach somebody anything. I am just sitting down and trying to figure out how to paint something that really interests me, but is also a challenge. Um, and you enter this beautiful flow state where your brain is just like firing off all sorts of goodness in all sorts of directions. I, I'm terrible at explaining this, but you just feel so amazing when you're working on a project like this when it's just challenging enough to push you to your limits but you have the skill to undertake it so you got to work in your sketchbook man it's like the it's like one of the best things you can do for yourself so for the uh the reflections on the silver pump i'm putting some streaks of the dark color up and down and um i noticed that on the bottle itself it was all kind of like lines of reflections i let that dark paint dry on the spout and decided to work on the uh 
um, shadow on the table, which I did with just a watered down version of that same gray mix that I had made. And I just kind of spread it around so they'd have kind of some atmosphere. It's gonna need some more dark later, but that'll get me started anyway. Now I did want to let you know that I had set my lotion bottle on a piece of white paper that was leaned up against the wall to kind of edit out all of the distractions and just have that bottle to look at. And um, now I took a little bit of white and added it into that kind of dull gray mix and I put in some of the lighter streaks in the spout uh, on top of the bottle there so I could get that kind of uh, shininess that I wanted. The shadow under the bottle needed to be a little bit darker, so I just charged in with some of my darkest gray mix and just started kind of uh, stippling it in there along the um, the bottom of the um, the bottle because there wasn't a super strong shadow because it's sitting in front of me where I have studio lights, so everything is very like uh, lit from all directions, so I don't get a strong shadow when I do that. And... Um, and I just kind of put it in there just to give it a little grounding. Now I decided for my yellow to use yellow ochre. Um, I knew I'm going to want some reflected warm light here and there and um, that also completes my my triad so that it just gives me a lot more versatility when it comes to mixing colors. So I added um, a little bit of uh, yellow into my dark color because it was just a little too purple for my liking and I use that to give me more of that black effect. Now you do have to be careful or a more neutral effect I should say. Uh, you have to be careful when you're adding yellow to like purple to try to make a neutral is that it usually goes muddy and the reason for that is that warm colors tend to make mud where cool colors tend to give you crisper shadows and yellow ochre is a very muddy yellow. Um, so you just gotta do it just enough to counteract the purple from your uh, rose and blue mix. And I'm adding that color for my uh, darkest shadows in the bottom of the um, of the bottle, especially where the you have several layer, layers of glass that are being kind of, um, oh, kind of layered on each other because you have like a, 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 like a pearl of glass or you've got, you're seeing the edge of the bottle and so you have a thicker layer of glass you're looking through and uh, that's just helping to get that um, really solid look. Now keep in mind the bottle is filled with lotion and lotion is opaque so you're not seeing through to the back side of the bottle um, so it does make it a little more manageable and it also makes it a little more um, doable in gouache since gouache is an opaque medium. In case you're wondering what palette I'm using, um, it's just a white plate from the dollar store. Uh, I try to find the squarish ones if I can, and I have a few of them on hand because that way I can leave the paint on them if I'm in between uh, working on a project. I have probably four or five of them and they're really handy and for a buck you really can't beat it. Any white ceramic plate will be fine, so you can always keep your eye out on yard sales as well. And I do rinse my brush between um, getting colors out of my little plastic containers so that I don't contaminate the mix. And I've completely before I close them up. That will also help um, the paints from getting any bacteria or mold in them. Now I'm using pure white to add the reflections on the spout of the um, lotion bottle there. Just get the little uh, hints of white. It's more like um, just a final touch, like a like sprinkles on a cupcake. You don't want to overdo it or you lose the effect. And I switched to a tiny brush for this. And um, the brushes I've been using for this project are the um, Creative Mark Mimic Kalinsky brushes. So they are a completely faux fur brush. There's no animal fur in there, but they act like a, um, a Kalinsky sable brush so they're a little bit firmer than um, like a, a mimic squirrel brush like a faux squirrel they're kind of absorbent but they're not as absorbent as like a squirrel brush but they're also not as um, as slick as like a golden tacklon brush but golden tacklon brushes work really good with gouache too um, I just like the firmness and the detail I can get with these brushes and I have the value set of these so um, they're they're not crazy expensive they're you know a little more expensive than like um, just regular tacklon brushes but they will last you forever if you take care of them and you're only using them for watercolor or gouache. This phase of the painting is the reward phase. I get to go through with my tiny little brush and a little bit of white and dab little highlights on all the little pearls in the glass, all the little raised bits and facets. It's it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like uh, your reward for putting in the hard work and doing an accurate sketch and you know plugging through. And I also want to do a little warm highlighting. So I took some yellow ochre with quite a bit of white and made this kind of a buttercream color and I'm just reflecting in the uh, chrome like pump area just with a few little streaks of that warm light. You'll often see that like when you're working on still life there will be um, some light like it might be a light turned on behind you a ceiling light something like even if you have uh, cool daylight lights on your table where you're working you will still catch 
Um, maybe it's a reflection of light. Maybe it's a reflection of something warm in the environment, but you'll get these little warm sparkles. And I feel like that just gives you such a beautiful quality to add those in. So really just search for those details and um, make sure you put them in. Remember, it's your sketchbook. Nobody's going to judge it. Nobody has to see it. This is for you. This is your time. I have to admit, I was feeling a little dragging kind of, um, when I got up this morning, I was like, oh, that's right, I gotta work in my sketchbook. And I was like, I wanted to, but I also wanted to just veg on the couch and watch morning political programs on TV. But I knew that I would feel so much better after I did this, and I'm so glad I did because the process was just 100% enjoyable. And uh, I like to go in after my highlights, a super darkest mix that I have, and just kind of um, refine and sharpen up any edges that I feel need it. I'd love to know what you're working on in your sketchbook today. Are you gonna follow along with this, or are you going to do something completely different let me know in the comments below and um, if you want to share your sketchbook Sunday tag me on Instagram so I can see it and if you feel like you want a little bit more help in the drawing department please uh, check out my new class learn to draw with Lindsay I will link that up along with a 50% off coupon code for you in the video description um, so far the feedback has been wonderful for my students and I've been seeing some really inspiring artwork done by them thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting